what's going on guys this is Devin and I'm back with another video of seeing me in the scene if you haven't watched the first episode you need to go check it out it is I'm not gonna go super deep into it because I really want to get to this video but it's all about how I connect to Charlie Born Alone from Owns Queen Sugar this episode is all about how I connect to All-American Spencer James. I just finished watching season three. Y'all can beat me up right now. Give me all your booze. But hey, girl's life be hectic, all right? Um, but yeah, just three topics for today that I really want to touch on and how I really connected with not only all three seasons but especially this third season really hit home for me because Spencer James was coming back home to Crenshaw y'all <laughs> and the reason why I connect with that so much is because I'm from Virginia and I left five years ago to move to Chicago now I am back and I can connect to Spencer and how every a lot of people I don't say everyone a lot of people don't understand why he came back home <clears throat> a lot of people are for it a lot of people are against it a lot of people are confused um and so it he you kind of see him going through this phase where people are falling off you know some relationships are getting stronger other relationships that he had forever are like being torn apart and i had can definitely relate to that um the thing that i hate so much is trying to have to explain things to people about why i make certain decisions especially because i feel that the reason why i make a lot of decisions in my life is because i'm led by god so when people ask me like the whys it, it really frustrates and agitates me but I understand you know people have care they have concern for you some people want the best for you some people just want to be nosy <laughs> but some people really have your best intent at heart um and when you're moving and you're and you're living in a faith journey you know it's never going to make sense to people <laughs> ever 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 like God can be doing some really big miraculous things and in the very twinkling of the eye at the very last minute he come through and for people that's scary and not a lot of people live their lives like that even if they say that they believe in God they don't live their lives like that um so it's hard for them to grasp <laughs> what could God be possibly doing with you? You know what I'm saying? Like, who are you? Why are you so special? You know what I'm saying? You're not Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Like, people have said things to me like that. Um, but I only know the testimony that I have or the story that I have based off of why I left Virginia in the first place. There was something that God needed me to experience. If you don't know, I'm an actress. I'm a dancer. I'm a writer. I'm a, just a creative in general i consider myself to be like a creative entrepreneur um and that's what this blog is all about creative lifestyle <clears throat> and i want people to follow me along my journey so me sharing my faith is really important for me to do um and so i needed that experience to leave virginia you know a lot of people say there's nothing in virginia you know what i'm saying and i think that that's why god brought me back here to prove that there is something that can be birthed out of what seems to be nothing if you think about the story of Mary you think about her having Jesus and where he came from like it was a small little town that nobody really spoke about <laughs> and I think that I had to leave here though to experience some bigger things I had to get some experience in the acting world I had to get experience in the modeling world things that I was so afraid to do or to break out to do while I was here I would have never done that unless God had pushed me into that uncomfortable place now that he sent me back it's a little you know bittersweet but also too each and every day it's being more unraveled and open to me why he's brought me back and the impact that he wants me to make in my hometown so that's the first way that i connect to spencer james because he's so passionate about his hometown um i don't think that he really wanted to leave in the first place he really had his mother had to convince him to to actually go to the white school <laughs> because he was so much entrenched in the culture and the community um his people like he's loyal and that's another that's another reason why i connect to him so much 
Um, I think that a lot of people think, like when I told them about what I did or how I left, like it was like, oh, you're running away and things like that. But it was like, um, no, not really. It's like, why would I move to the place that the news talks the worst about deaths and killings? And, and, you know, people talk about the weather as like the worst, especially in the winter, you know, with above all so many other like segregation and political things about the city of Chicago it's just can be like very much corrupt not gonna even lie it could be very corrupt <laughs> so it's like there's so much that I had to experience being in a bigger city because I also to believe that I won't be in for Virginia forever I believe that one day there's gonna be a time where I move again so it's like I had to experience that I had to experience the people I had to experience uh, the culture, the entertainment industry, their arts culture, like, so I can know what it is that maybe my city is missing. What What is something that my city needs to experience? What do the people need here? What can they benefit from what I've had? Um, so those things are just really important for me to, like, share with you guys as also, too, as creators and entertainers, because I think that you guys can connect and understand a little bit more of my of my journey when it comes to specifically pursuing the arts. Uh, so that's the first thing. Second thing is that savior complex <laughs> that Spencer has. Woo, I was watching it and I'm not gonna even lie, I was being a little bit judgy at first. I'm like, dang, he just won't let Coop just do her own thing. Like, just, you know, if she messes up, she's gotta make her own mistakes. You know what I'm saying? That was, I think, the hardest part for me, how he, you know, was always doing so much for her. So when she popped up in his stuck point, it was like, wow, like it kind of really went over my head, honestly. But I definitely connected him with the savior complex because even though I may not have a lot to give at the moment monetarily, I really love pouring into people in regards to their purpose in regards to like them having peace just in their life and their minds and their hearts overall because I just can't believe that you can do any other thing in life especially the thing that you're purposed to do if you don't have peace your mind's gonna be chaotic you're gonna be angry you're gonna be frustrated you're gonna be just all, all over the place like a whole lot of chaos and confusion <laughs> and I only know that because I've lived I feel like I lived most of my life that way just angry just nasty just like you know what I'm saying like not having the right mindset so it's really important for me with the other parts of my business is when I do meditation, when I do yoga, when I'm teaching dance, when I'm teaching a workshop, like I have to have those core things rooted within it because I have to just get people back to the to the right place, to the right mindset. So they can be like, hey, huh, you know. I should probably be doing this but I'm not doing it because I'm fearful or I'm not doing it because I'm letting this hold me back or I'm not doing it because of this thing you know what I'm saying and so I definitely see what the imbalance between pouring out pouring out pouring out to people all the time even if it's just from your knowledge even if it's just from your heart like, I think sometimes people see, like, money as the biggest thing that you can have or the biggest thing that you can give. But there's so many other ways that you can give and pour out of yourself. But you don't want to pour out of an empty cup. That's what's... The, the, I feel like that's the biggest thing that if I learned anything else from going to Chicago and moving back here, that was the number one of the number one things. You can't pour out of an empty place. You have to fill yourself up first. You have to love yourself first before you can do anything else, before you can love anyone else, before you can give to anyone else. Like you have to recognize the value that you bring into every situation. You have to recognize the love, the light that you bring um, in order for you to encourage or uplift others, in order for you to do that thing that you were... So wildly passionate about you have to first look within yourself and say why am I doing this what is my why because the passion will burn out <laughs> it always does <laughs> there will be days where you don't want to do it anymore and you want to give up and you want to quit and you have to think back to say like this is why this is why this is why and keep pushing and keep going because we can run on feelings and emotions all day and that'll burn out too <laughs> that'll burn out too um so yeah save your complex that's something <laughs> i haven't been to counseling in a while y'all but that's something 
um, that I feel like I'm processing now on my own. Um, just setting boundaries is so important and being like a clear communicator um, and being very self-aware of myself are things that I've worked. I feel like I've gotten really good at these last past couple years. Um, just understanding that, yes, I can still help people, but first you have to save yourself. Like in the airplane, you have to put on your oxygen mask before you can put on someone else's. <laughs> so that's that. And the third and final thing I told y'all, I'm not going to be keeping y'all long on these videos. Um, but the third and final thing was, oh, I know. I said, I went over transition. I went over, oh no, the other thing, stuck point, stuck point, stuck point, stuck point, that stuck point, bro. It will really, oh my goodness. What stuck point makes me think of is forgiveness first to yourself because a lot of times we blame ourselves for things that we couldn't help I think that yourself can be a stuck point if you watched it you know I never was into or knew what sports therapy was or even had an idea of how it works but I was like so amazed by it watching the episodes of Spencer and Jordan going to to their sports therapist when he talked about the stuck point I was like, wow, it makes so much sense. And I connect to it even more, me being a dancer and wanting to go back to school for dance therapy because I know there's a lot of people in the black and brown community that don't like therapy. And so I'm like, you know what? What's another way to get people to get all that trauma out of their bodies other than dance? It brings joy, it brings laughter, it brings happiness. Like, Black people will go dance and have fun, right? Before they want to sit down and talk about real deep stuff that's none of your damn business, right? <laughs> so, like, I feel like that's just, you know, kind of a hook to draw people in. But I never thought about the trauma that comes with being in sports and all that happens to your body. And that stuck point really got to me and had me writing down some things and thinking over some things and some people that I need to forgive and let go of things and even first like I said myself forgiving myself right and then also to forgiving people who may have hurt me and didn't know or hurt me and did know or you know like but humans are gonna be humans right <laughs> we're all on this life journey um trying to get to our expected end whatever it is for whoever you are um so i just want to say i hope you guys connected to this in some way let me know in the comments if you you know connected in any of those three ways the stuck point the survivor um complex i mean the savior complex even just the transitioning um before I left here, you know, I, I really believe that before I left Virginia the first time, God told me that I was paving the way. I was paving the way for those who, you know, would come after me. And so many things have happened since I left. Um, one of my cousins left home and he told me that he would have never left home if it wasn't for me. So I just feel like obedience is so much better than sacrifice. And I just hope that not only can you learn that from me and my story, but you can also learn from Spencer's story as well.